All right, share love tea. Welcome to the channel. We've got a special video for you guys today. We're going on an epic journey to the unknown. We're gonna talk a little bit about my journey recently to becoming an online seller. About waste in our society. Uh, about things that are worth money that you wouldn't expect. Uh, so we're just going to discuss a little bit of everything. Right now we're walking through my local town. It lives just south of Montreal. I don't know. I know you're not supposed to mention that stuff on the internet. You know, I hope no weirdos come at me. But, you know, message me. You guys want to go for coffee or something? I'm down. Anyways. So what started my journey? So if you followed my channel, a couple months ago I released a DVDs pickup video. And that's pretty much what started the bug. So, already I was at thrift shops. I'm, I'm thinking, 50 cents a dollar. I was paying 20, 25 bucks for some DVDs. You know, two for 15, two for 25 back in the day. And now you can pick up DVDs all over the place. Well, not all over the place, but at secondhand shops, pawn shops, uh, garage sales, stuff like that. Um, yeah, for cheap. And people online still still will buy them at a reasonable price, right? Um, you know, sometimes 15, 20 bucks. And if you're paying 50 cents or a dollar, that's pretty good profit, right? Even if it's even if you're only making four or five bucks on a DVD, um, I still think that's pretty good profit, considering your your it's a low risk, low reward. But anyways, my point was, so I'm at these thrift shops, checking for DVDs, checking for CDs, and then I realize, hey, there's a lot of other stuff that's underpriced here. So, a million YouTube videos later, looking up what's valuable, what's not valuable. I'm very OCD when it comes to things like that. When I get onto a topic, I just focus in, keep going, keep going. Until I know just about everything you could possibly think of. Um, now, this topic actually there's so much to learn that's why I'm it's very exciting for me because you can't know every brand every possible valuable right a lot of this stuff you have to look up online but the tools are all there it makes it so easy you know with uh, you have Google Lens you have the eBay scanner you have Amazon scanner so there's lots of ways to, to figure out if, if something is valuable or not so yeah you know most people have thrift shops around them uh, there's chain thrift shops there's community run uh, second hand stores uh, you know pawn shops pawn shops aren't really the greatest uh, you know sometimes you'll you'll find decent stuff in there but they're, they're usually asking you know the price is that you're not going to be able to make money on it um so you really thrift shops garage sales is, if you want to resell that's where you want to focus um in quebec our our chain thrift shops are village de Villar, which is value village and renaissance which i don't know which uh, if that's a chain that's exclusive to Quebec or not. Um, you know, elsewhere in North America, they have like Goodwill, I believe. Um, and probably other chains that I'm unaware of. Um, but yeah, they also upcharge on a lot of, on a lot of stuff because they always run deals that are like 30% off or whatever, you know. So they'll upcharge. So on those sale days, you know, that's when you kind of 
vulture in to uh, grab the good, better prices. Uh, but if you're not getting a discount, you know, a lot of that stuff is up charge and still not worth it. Um, in my local town, I've had pretty good luck at the uh, our community run ones. We have, uh, there's a church, there's a, one in a church that's a church basement. Um, there's another one that's run by the church. It's affiliated with the church anyways. It's an older couple that runs the place. Both those places have very strange hours. It's like 11 to 2.30, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or something like that. And it's like times when normally people aren't working, but if you're not doing anything else, you know, they, they sometimes have good stuff. But it's something you have to do on a regular basis to find good stuff because, you know, there's a lot of other resellers out there that are gonna swipe it up. Or just people looking for good stuff. I'm not sure where I should be heading right now. I guess we'll, we could walk onto the main street, but then it's kind of a little strange if I'm, if it, recording people are going to be like this dude's just walking and talking to himself anyways well you know what we'll go down these stairs we'll go be behind this building um so yeah i'm i'm i started off by going to all these different thrift shops and then i found for these big chain ones, they have bins, uh, places where it's like the Goodwill bins in the States, if you look that up. Um, for Renaissance, anyways, I found one. I don't know where the Value Village one is. I haven't come across it, but there's one for Renaissance in Montreal, just off to Cary. I forget what the road is. And uh, so anything that doesn't sell at the Renaissance places ends up at, at that place in bins and then they charge by weight. And you could get a lot of stuff for very cheap. The only thing is, it's a bit dusty, a bit grimy in there. People are very vulturous. They're like, they because ro they roll out new rows of bins and you're not allowed to touch it, anything until all the bins are out. And people are always cheating that, eh? And then they'll, they have whistles and they get like, they'll, they'll give you crap anyways if, they, if you get caught uh, grabbing something before they say go. But yeah, once the last bin is in, they say go and people just go nuts. It's like, you know, those old Black Friday uh, videos where people like trampling each other. I mean, it's not that bad, but <clears throat> it's hard to squeeze in and people are grabbing, let me tell you. Um, but even in those bins, you know, like there are, there is some pretty gross stuff you come across. Like in secondhand clothes, I don't want no underwear. I don't care, man. I don't want your shorts with possible skid marks in it. I've come across that at those bins. You know what I mean? Some gross ass shit. There was a diaper in there. I don't know how well they, they checked the stuff before they put it in those bins, but there's been some gross stuff. So that got me to thinking, you know? If I'm out here with these vultures trying to grab stuff out of bins, that's kind of grimy, mixed in with underwear and stuff anyways what is the difference between that and you know a garbage bag full of belongings that somebody throws in the garbage on the curbside or in a dumpster even what is the difference the only difference is where it's getting dropped off and you would assume okay well they have all these secondhand stores right people know 
people know that there's goodwill places and donation boxes all over the place. So why would they shoot out perfectly good stuff in the trash, right? That's my thought. That was always my thought. But I'm willing to wager more stuff ends up in the trash than ends up in the goodwill. And I, and I don't even think it's like 50-50. I would, I'd be willing to, to, to bet like 70% of stuff just ends up in the dumpster or in the garbage rather than people going down to bring it to a donation bin. Which is crazy. It, it baffles me. Because there's even parking lots around my place. <coughs> There's a Goodwill donate. There's a donation box on one side of the parking lot. There's dumpsters on the other side of the parking lot. And you know where it, there's st st bags of clothes? Beside the dumpster or in the dumpster. Are you kidding me? You're in the same parking lot. So to me, it's, it's, it's kind of frustrating and it's amazing to me at the same time that the level of waste and you know I have to give a quick shout out to two YouTube channels that I've been following um, Breathcast which is breakfast belt with the F and the K switched and Mike the scavenger I really suggest you guys check out these two YouTube channels um, Mike the Scavenger mostly focuses on metal and scrap, although he will grab other valuable stuff while he's there, like why not? And Breathcast mostly focuses on consumer goods and like clothes and even food. Um, now, I'm kind of skeptical, of, even if it's not expired, eating food out of a dumpster, out of garbage, people do it. People do it all the time. Um, I haven't come around to that yet. But as far as other stuff, <coughs> you wouldn't believe, I've only been doing it for about two months, guys. And I, I, I would say I'm very amateur at it. And I don't do it all the time. But I will say, I have pulled out some incredible stuff out of the garbage. Stuff you wouldn't think that would be in the garbage. Um, video games. Literal money. I'm not even joking. Literal money. I've, I've, I've pulled out containers full of change. I've pulled out a bag full of Asian money. Um, I checked it up just if I exchanged it direct. It's worth like 60 bucks. Some of it's from 1962. It's like collectible. Um, so on the collector's market, value is like a thousand bucks. And somebody just tossed that in the garbage. Money. Literal money. Um, clothes all the time. And you would think, okay, well, if they're shooting it out, there must be something wrong with it. <sighs> Man. If you don't want it, make an eBay account, sell your old stuff. What are you doing? You're throwing money in the garbage, guys. I mean, you know, it leaves the opportunity for other people to benefit off, off it, but we shouldn't have to be jumping in the dumpster to, to grab your bag of money. What are you doing? What are you doing with your life, you know? Or give it to the donation centers, please, man. It, it, so, yeah. <coughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. So I live, I live in Canada, right? So it gets cold in the winter. You don't have to deal with any food rotting. There's no insects. You have to deal with the snow, you gotta deal with the cold. But other than that, dumpsters aren't that gross. During the summer, I can imagine. I haven't done it. I just started um, 
So as much as I, at first I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm starting to do this during the winter. That's probably not good for it. It's cold. You know what I mean? But I think probably there's less people doing it in the winter. Not to mention, like I said, no insects, no nothing rotting. Um, and even for the food, I guess food would probably stay good outside because it's not getting hot. So I guess if you're if you're one of the people that want to salvage food, um, you know, if I see something not it's not expired, maybe I'd grab it to, to bring it to the donation centers. On the most part, what <coughs> if I see a bag of clothes, I'll grab it. Um, and I'll grab whatever's good out of it. Now, if it has no value, or nobody, I don't want it, or nobody in my family wants it, then it goes to the donation center. But at least it's not going to the landfill. That's my mentality. So it benefits me because I could potentially make a couple extra bucks here and there. Um, and it benefits the planet because it's less pollution. <coughs> but you know, there was, a, there was a house recently that apparently had a house fire. I'm not gonna name any names, all right? Now this happened in my local town. I happened to come across it. I found the person's name in this open container that was in front of the house. The, the, there was an open container and then there was bags and bags of clothes, right? Along the curb. On top of the open container, I saw a Super Nintendo Mario Kart game. I saw Xbox games. Hell yeah, I'm going through that container. I spent hours. And the thing is, Nothing in the container was fire damaged. Nothing. The house didn't look fire damaged. I would have had no idea that that house was fire damaged. Quote unquote, I will say. If I didn't look that person's name up and happen to see that apparently there was a fire thing and they must have claimed everything on insurance and thrown everything in the house out. Whether it was damaged or not, they just shoot, shot everything out. Literally everything. There was toys, there was uh, furniture, uh, dishes, whatever. Everything. I'm, I'm, everything. And I have to figure it's some kind of insurance scam. No, no, not to like get this person in trouble. But there was no smoke damage on anything. And even if there was some smoke damage on it, there, there has to be a better way for our government and these insurance companies to figure this out than to just shoot everything in the, in the garbage. Uh, I mean, that's a strange rule to me where, oh, you've claimed it on insurance, you can't touch it, sorry. It's gotta go to the dumpster. It's got to go to the landfill. All your personal belongings. I mean, even if it's a legitimate claim, it's just strange to me. It is very much strange to me. Um, so for now, I think I'm going to turn you guys back on when we find something exciting. I'm going to go walk down the road and we'll take a look see if we can find anything exciting uh last night holy cow i found a full sound system with 100 watt speakers i found a barbie radio i found a bag of toys uh, a bag of clothes uh reebok shoes that looked perfect like the, i don't even know the person you know, I, it made me think like there was like a bag of clothes with this this pair of shoes, and it was almost like some some buddy's ex girlfriend was like fuck this stuff and just shot it out because there was not a single thing wrong with any of it. Um, 
or the person just, I don't know, didn't want it anymore. But brand new shoes, pretty much. So yeah, I'll see, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, we are back. And this is, I've been walking for a while. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes you just come up empty. Sometimes you'll search a lot of dumpsters so then there's nothing. I mean, you could go digging, but I'm more of a skimmer. You know, if I don't see anything of interest, I ain't going in there. So I'm gonna flip you guys around. We're gonna take a look at this dumpster. There's a lot of stuff in there. Hello? All right, maybe we won't flip you around. Hold on. So, let's see if you guys could take a look in here. There's a lot of clothes. I see some electronics down there. Uh, there's a smelly garbage bag over there. There's definitely uh, some food that was in here. But there's a lot of stuff. Um, so I got my gloves on. We'll root through it, see if we can't find anything somewhat exciting. And uh, I'll get back to you. I, I see some Christmas decorations. There's stuff in bags. You know, I'm guessing there's, you know, stuff in bags that's not gross. So let, let's hope. I'll let you guys know what we get out of this one. Alright, so this is the final haul, guys. What I ended up getting out of that one dumpster. Um, I'm trying to be quiet right now. Everybody in my house is sleeping. And hello, Coco. So she was not in the dumpster. Um, we got this flash hat. It still has a sticker on it. Pretty cool. A DVD player, which was the electronic that we spotted there. Some kind of plug, some cords that went to the DVD player. A box of sidewalk chalk. This bag that had these four watches in it, as well as a dime. Actual money again. <coughs> And this Mickey Mouse shirt, if Coco would move off it. Mickey Mouse, 18, or 1928. And this is how... This little Ricci stick. Now, I know we'll finish up outside. I'll give you guys a bit of a breakdown. All right, so we are back with the wrap up. So overall, not bad. Uh, you know, it took two hours of walking, checking dumpsters before I found a dumpster with some good stuff in it. But, you know, on the low end, even if you say 20, 20, 30 bucks worth of loot. Um, you know, the DVD player, even if it's five, 10 bucks, you know, it's not a lot. A lot of people have consoles nowadays, so you don't really need a DVD player. Uh, the watches, everybody's got a phone, so you probably don't need a watch. Although, uh, you know, and if you are getting a watch, it's a fancy watch, uh, probably to wear with a suit or something like that. You're not buying a, pawn shop watch okay Coco come on what's in there I don't know um, the flash hats bra practically brand new so I can imagine that's like 10 15 bucks online um, the Mickey shirts pretty nice um, and yeah overall not bad and a, a dime Fine, it's only a dime, but why do people shoot actual money in the garbage? Do you just not take the time to look through your things? And you know, how many times have you went in your jacket pocket and you're like, oh shit, there's 20 bucks in here I didn't know about. You know, how many people do you think throw out jackets and don't check the fucking pockets properly? I bet you it happens more often than not. And you know, around Christmas, 
people with, get cards with money. I bet you cards with money get shot out all the time. I don't doubt it. Um, like I said, I've only been doing this for a month or two, and the, the amount of stuff that I've pulled out of garbages, out of people, out of dumpsters, out of garbages, people's curbside and whatever, you know, it's, it's crazy, guys. It's crazy. Um, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm on foot. If you're doing it by car, which sometimes I do it by car, but... I just like to get the exercise. So for me, I'm in the area. I'm, I'm, I live right behind a, a mall. So I'm like right close to everything. <laughs> I have to keep looking down at her, making sure she's not up to no good down there. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, you have to, I mean, you gotta clean stuff good when you're getting it out of dumpsters. But at the same time, um, I'm not fighting f to get the good stuff at thrift shops with people. <laughs> There's plenty of good stuff in the dumpsters, man. <laughs> you know, to go to go through the clothing bins at um, at Goodwill or Renaissance or whatever. Um, you know, to find a nice Mickey Mouse shirt like that. You know, you might be searching plenty of bins. Find a nice flash hat like that, you're probably not going to find it at the bins. You're probably not going to find it at Village de Falar. Um, unless you're there at the right time. Uh, you know, because there's so many uh, resellers out there nowadays. Um, but people are scared. People are scared to go in the dumpster. People are scared to go in the garbage. And people assume that because somebody else is shooting it out. Oh, it must be broken, it must be no good. You know, I'm not gonna try that DVD player out for, you know, a couple days, let it make sure it's dry off inside and warm. So I don't light, <laughs> light the place on fire. Um, but I don't doubt that it probably works. And it's there's just as good a chance it works as any thrift shop. You know, a lot of these places, there's no, there's absolutely zero guarantee that it's going to work. And they have return policies, so they just figure, oh, the, the customer will try it out. And if it doesn't work, they'll bring it back. And you know what? I probably, knowing me, if I buy something and it doesn't work, half the time I won't even bother bringing it back. Especially if it's like a low uh, cost item and it's out of my way. So, you know, they bank on that too. So they'll, they'll charge you the same price for a broken one as a good one. Figuring out, maybe they'll return it, maybe they won't. Um, so they don't even bother testing them. So, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'll definitely still go to thrift shops and stuff like that too, to source because, um, you know, like if you're at the right place at the right time, there's still deals to be had. Um, but do an hour or two of this a night, get my exercise, and every night people are shooting stuff away, belongings away. People are always moving. People are cleaning out their stuff, and they think, oh, this has no value because it has no value to me. There's always people out there that want anything doesn't matter what it is people are into literally anything and online people buy almost literally anything there's a lot of things that you wouldn't think are worth money are really worth money like I'll give you a good example uh, t TV VCR DVD remotes uh, sound system remotes any kind of remotes like that you can pick up easily for 50 cents, a dollar, very cheap. Um, anywhere, uh, garage sales, thrift shops, people shoot them out all the time because they don't know what they go to. All you have to search is the serial number and people buy those on, on eBay. I've sold several remotes that I've picked up for 50 cents or a dollar 
for like 20 bucks plus shipping. You know, pe people are paying like $30 for a new remote for their DVD player or VCR or whatever it is. Um, you know, some of them, I bet you don't even, haven't even actually lost the remote. It's in their couch somewhere. Um, but people are willing to spend the money. I don't know what it is. If there's like a, a bunny rabbit under these stairs, but she keeps going at, going at it. I think I'm going to put her back inside and we'll keep talking. Because she's sniffing away. She's causing too much, too much ruckus for me right now. All right, we'll be back. All right, so my dog's back inside. Not causing me so much troubles. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it's only been about a month or two, and I'm still I'm still amazed at the kind of stuff that people throw away, and um, there's just so much stuff that people don't think are is worth money. Like even VHS, VHS has become collectible, believe it or not. Um, you know, a lot of old electronics are worth worth money even for parts um clothes i wouldn't think people buy secondhand shoes people buy secondhand shoes i have never in my entire life bought a second pair hand pair of shoes but people do buy it and when you look at the price of stuff nowadays it's understandable because stuff has become so overpriced and the quality of a lot of products has just gone continually downhill because these fucking companies are so greedy they just want to maximize profits and uh you know us as the consumer suffers because we end up with shitty products that end up in landfills because a couple years later they're broken and they're not lasting like they should and you know you look at old brands of like uh levi's jeans you know Levi's jeans from the 80s and stuff like that. Super expensive now because people want quality products. And at the time they were making quality products. And now it's like gone downhill like every other company. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, the little reachy stick, I'll tell you. If you don't want to get in there, the little reachy stick, you look in there, just take a look. You don't have to get gross. It, you know, uh, the dumpster that I showed you guys, I, I got what I moved around what I could with the reachy stick. Unfortunately, the, the window on the other side was sealed shut. So I wasn't able to get in there. So... I actually had to hop in there and uh, to see what was on the other side, which I'm glad I did. I found a bag full of watches. I found, you know, a nice Mickey Mouse shirt. I found that nice flash hat. You know, some of this stuff, you know, there was a lot more I could have salvaged too. And maybe I should have, you know, maybe I should have just got a whole bag of it, even if I just didn't want it to bring to uh, the second hand store. Uh, but you know, like you can only do so much. I've had, you know, there was another night this week I found, pff, had to be about 20, 30 bags uh, of belongings behind a building. So I just loaded all that up, brought it home, saw what was in it, what I wanted kept, what I didn't want I brought to the second hand store. So I did a lot of trips to the second hand store. Um, and I've done that a couple times, uh, recently between, you know, that, that house, that, like I was talking about that had a fire. There was another house. I'm pretty sure, uh, the people must've passed, passed away. And then whatever the relatives didn't want, they just chucked out in the front lawn, not even in any, any container, nothing. They just literally hucked it all on the front lawn uh and that was that was the place i found a bag of money i was like what um so you know i've had a couple turning points since i've started this where i was like you know how much 
how much money would it take me to hop in a dumpster? Well, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. You know, I think for a lot of us, our threshold's pretty low if it's not gross. You know, if you see literally $50 sitting in the dumpster, you're not going to hop in and get it. Uh, you know, most people are not looking and also most people don't see the value of things. Um, everything has a value, even if you can't sell it online, even if you can't sell it at a garage sale, even if you can't give it away, it might have a scrap value. You know, a lot of, a lot of metal, especially look at the price of copper these days. Copper wire, copper wire is like four bucks a pound. You know, you get a tote full of old wires. People are shooting old wires out all the time. You get a tote full of old wires. Bring that down to the scrapyard. You know, especially if you have a truck, if you have a pickup truck. You know, there's a lot of people that do scrap runs, that do metal scrap runs. Um, which is kind of like what I'd like to do. But I'd like to do like both, you know, like... Uh, salvaging consumer goods electronics stuff like that video games bags of money um, but if I had a truck I'd be doing metal too there's a lot of times where I see a lot of metal where I'm like damn if I had a truck I'd just chuck that in the truck you know even if it's only worth a couple of bucks you get enough of it it pays for your gas at minimum and who who knows what else you're gonna find out there? Um, yeah. So uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of video. Um, I wish I had like a GoPro to put on my head, because that would make it so good for like uh, showing you guys what what I'm looking at, you know, rather than having to move like this figure out where the camera's pointing this doesn't seem like the best setup um but like tell tell me if you like just listening to me ramble walk around um it's nice out you know there's tons of snow it's a bit cold but if you're dressed for it no problem quebec winters ain't nothing Um, it's 2024, everybody. Happy New Year's. Belated happy holidays, you know. Uh, we're not too far into it. And, you know, for the first night out, walking for two hours, finding nothing, I thought we were going to come up empty. And then we found that last score. So pretty good for our first night out. Um, hopefully we could do more videos like this. I think it's pretty fun and definitely going to thrift shops and the next time I go to the bin place I want to show you guys how crazy it is in there because when they bring out the new rows I can't imagine people enjoy being filmed though because they're like literally acting like animals to get this stuff sometimes um, but I'm gonna try and do a little filming in there because uh, it is pretty fun and it you never know what you're gonna get it's like very uh I enjoy mystery. I find life doesn't have enough mystery these days. You know, with the internet, you're able to search up and everything. So you just know everything. Anything you want. You just Google it. It's right there. So mystery is not a thing we get a lot in our lives. And you know what? Dumpster diving kind of gives that a little bit of that for me. Because, you know, you never know what's going to be in there. You know, you might open a bag of disgustingness. You might open a bag of clothes. You might open a bag of toys. And even toys. There's a lot of toys. People pay a lot of money for toys, guys. Even secondhand. You know, you... Um, even the cheap toys. You get enough of them, lot them together. I'm telling you right now. Anybody thinking about reselling? It's really not bad. Um, I'm, tr I'm attempting, I'm attempting to do this full time right now, but we will see. I got a storage unit. 
I got all the different places. I know all the different thrift shops now. I know when they have their sales. And on top of it, now I figured out, hey, I could source <laughs> in my local area for literally free and find just as good loot as the thrift shops. Who would have figured? Um, so yeah, all the best guys. Until next video, um, just don't, if you guys are listening to this, don't throw your stuff out. If you can find a thrift shop, a secondhand store, a community place to donate it to, or th sell it yourself online, it's very not difficult. Selling on eBay is super easy. Super easy. Listings are already done for you. All you have to do is search what it is, and probably somebody's already done a listing. So you don't have to make it yourself. Shipping, super easy. If you have a printer, you can print out your own labels with paper, tape it to the box. If you have a thermal printer, even better, print out your own stickers and drop it off at the post office. Simple as that. Um, boxes are expensive, but again, that's another thing. I live right behind a mall. They're, they throw out so many boxes for shipping I don't have to pay for that you know I bought I bought actually a, a bunch of boxes when I started doing this eBay thing but then I realized why am I doing that there's literally free boxes like 30 feet from my front door so that's kind of where we're at that's kind of where we're at guys um, so join me on this voyage because who knows? Um, you might watch me make it big. You might watch me go broke. Um, it could go either way. All I know is I put myself in a position where it's going to be do or die. And I kind of like to be in that position because it forces you um, to to motivate you a little bit uh, and i'm not i'm not the most highly motivated person so to, to put a little fire under my buns okay now you know this i have to pay for a storage unit i have to pay for rent i have to pay my credit cards shit's real you know what i mean and for some people they don't like living like that and i don't blame you you know there's no sure thing um but I kind of like that. That's, that's, I don't know why, but I, that's how I like. And I've always liked to collect things. So this, this whole thing has just been really fun for me um, so far. I get to buy things that I just think are cool. And sometimes it's stuff that I don't think is cool. That just has value and that's the right price that I could resell. Um... You know, even expired ink cartridges. I just sold two expired ink cartridges that I bought for a dollar each for 30 bucks. I mean, people are shooting that stuff out all the time. They have it at thrift stop stores. They have it at all these places. All you have to do is go in there, buy it, put the list in. It's so easy, guys. Um, even... I, I would suggest doing it part-time if you can. Um, probably not doing it full-time like me. But we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes because I'm having fun with it. So until the next time, guys, share love out.